The highly infectious Delta variant was first discovered in India in October. It's caused some of the highest case counts and death counts in several countries in both Asia and Africa. But how is it impacting us here in the United States? And are the vaccines that we're using effective at fighting it? I spoke to Dr. Corinne McDaniels Davidson from SDSU School of Public Health about it. You know, despite the warning, so many people have still decided not to get a, va a vaccine. And this is happening at the same time that we're seeing the Delta variant become the predominant strain here in California. I think the most recent numbers are showing that in June, 35% of the new COVID cases um, were sequenced as the Delta variant, and that compares to just 5.6% in May. How concerned are you about this? I have a high degree of concern. This variant is significantly more infectious. And as you say, it's on its way to becoming the dominant circulating variant. You know, we know that you need to be fully vaccinated in order to be protected against this variant. And so many are unprotected right now, either because they haven't completed the two dose vaccine or they're immunocompromised and the vaccine doesn't work well for them, or they're unvaccinated and choose to be or don't have access to the vaccine, or they're unvaccinated because they're kids and under the age of 12. Yeah, and even though California is doing relatively well compared to some other states in the United States, um, there are still several counties here in California that still have low vaccination numbers. And there seems to be a very direct correlation between low vaccination numbers and high COVID cases still, and even still uh, the death counts. How important is it that every county and every region in the United States gets their vaccination numbers up? Yeah, there's something that we say, and that's that all public health is local. And when you're looking at susceptible individuals, and these are people who aren't protected for one reason or another, that's who you worry about. And we have pockets of people like that, even in high vaccin vaccination counties. And we do, as you mentioned, have a lot of counties with low vaccine rates, and we're very concerned about them. Yeah, and we know that the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines have been proven effective at combating other strains of coronavirus. What do we know so far about how well they're combating uh, the Delta variant? So all three vaccines actually look good against the Delta variant, but, and this is a big but, you have to complete the series, especially for those two-dose mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna. You have to really have both in order to be protected. And when I mean protected, I'm talking about protection against hospitalization and death. I found this to be a staggering number. Some public health experts are saying that the Delta variant could account for 90% of the cases here in California in the next coming months. So it seems that given what you just said about the vaccines proving all three of them proving effective against the Delta variant, um, right now, California's vaccination numbers are sitting at around 70%. How important is it now that those remaining 30% of the people here in California who haven't gotten a vaccine for whatever reason, as you pointed out, um, get it if they can? It's so important. And it's time to have conversations with friends, families, neighbors about getting the vaccine. And it's time to help break down um, barriers to access. So it's time to make it super easy for people to get vaccinated. And that might mean different things for different people. So you have to really have those conversations and ask the questions. And, you know, we're seeing some countries in both Africa and Asia who are seeing astounding numbers of COVID cases, the highest they've seen since the pandemic began and even death, uh, death counts. I'm sure you've seen the pictures coming out of India and some countries in Africa as well. Um, those countries are, enforcing restrictions again. Um, whereas here, you know, we just saw the big reopening in California. Do you think it's possible that we would ever see anything like that happening here in the United States? I think it's likely that we'll see patterns like that in communities with low vaccine rates where you have high um, infectious or high, high levels of um, infection and hospitalization and death. Whether these communities respond with a return to restrictions is going to be highly variable and very localized. The U.S. doesn't have a breaker system the way that uh, some other countries do. And so the public health measures are really up to each locality to, to decide.
Yeah, and I the final question I wanted to ask you about is President Biden had set, you know, a semi-ambitious goal of getting 70% of Americans vaccinated by July 4th. He did fall short of that goal. And, you know, a lot of public health experts and politicians both have said that the people who wanted to get the vaccine got it the second it was available to them. And now we're sort of working through people who either can't get access to it or are hesitant about the vaccine for whatever reason. What do you think it's going to take to get uh, those final 30% of people across the United States vaccinated? I mean, I know this is probably out of your scope as a science professional, but um, I mean, what do you think it's going to take to get over that hump? So it's actually right in my lane because my uh, background is in health education <laughs> and it's going to really depend on each individual's reason for their hesitation or the barriers that they face. So there's no one size fits all easy answer. We have to do old fashioned one on one health education. And that's where we engage in conversations with people to figure out where they are, what's stopping them, what's causing a roadblock or what information have they heard that isn't correct. And then we talk to them and we address their questions and their concerns. And it's not easy work, but it's absolutely necessary. And straight ahead on Politically Speaking, the White House has said it wants to extend a lifeline to deported veterans, but advocates of that community say they're only cautiously optimistic about the announcement. I have reaction from a local deported veteran and activist coming up next. 